we are green in Mugello for 2024 and round five of the European Le Mans series bursts into life and all of a sudden the fight is on for the head of the order in LMP2. Are they all going to stop with their cold breaks in time for San Donato? One or two have gone very, very wide. There was just a hint of a touch, but amazingly they're all still pointing in the right direction and forcing its way through is the 34 car into third position driven by Clement Novelak. He should make per progress in amongst one or two silvers around him. Jonas Reed, though. Clement Novelak is definitely turning the screw in third position as his green and yellow car jinks to the left. He's going to go around the outside of Manuel Maldonado and on the brakes for San Donato takes second position. That was set up way back, exiting Bucine corner, turn 15. Helped out by that big hole in the air being made by Derek De Boer. So De Boer will have the inside line for San Donato. How late is he going to break, though? And is Sarah Bovi going to be braver as she slows for the first corner? The problem is, if she gets caught on that side, this might be an in for Martin Berry. Iron Dames uh, from various levels of that programme, loving that. Aston Martin side by side, arriving into Luco together, and De Boer toughing it out, trying to hang on to second position. He can't do it, though. They're not from the same team. One is a TF, Tom Ferrier Sport run car, the other one behind from Switzerland, Racing Spirit of Le Mans. DKR engineering car, which is in the barrier. This is an LMP2 Pro-Am car, and it's Andres Latour. So where has this happened? Into the final corner? Yes, that's where the yellow flags are, the approach to Bucine corner, and uh, barely got anywhere around that left-hander before skating off through the gravel, and quite a heavy hit under those tyres. Johnny Edgar being overtaken by the 43 car of Sebastian Alvarez, who had held the fastest lap before Clement Novelak hit the front. So Alvarez and Novalak are in fact teammates within Inter Europol competition, although they drive different cars. Endurance racing is what it says on the tin. It's a matter of getting pace, but keeping that pace as consistent as possible through long distances, hard on the tires, hard on fuel strategy, hard physically and mentally on the drivers. But yeah. there's a change. The 43 car loses out two places there. And is this going to be a third? There's really only one racing line through there, so these LMP2s had to wait for the GR Racing Ferrari to get through before they could then start to overlap it. And now to the high side arrives on the scene Niels Coulson in the black and green Duquesne car, and he does gain a spot. Now the championship rivals are side by side. Johnny Edgar on the inside, but it'll be the outside for Luco, and Alvarez back through again in the number 43 car. Even flow, isn't it? It's good stuff at the moment up and down this pack championship battles being established that is Ryan Cullen having now cleared the LMP3 field so his next target 12 seconds ahead is going to be the 24 Nielsen racing car oh and just a little taking a bit of grass to get by there, Clement Novelak. They're side by side, and this is change for the lead. 66 car just runs wide. Is there room there for the 51 car up the inside? We'll say while we get a moment to have a look at the 66 car. Together with AF Corsa, the longest established teams in this championship. Oh, that was a touch, and around goes the Duquesne car. But that was a massive save. And trouble for the 47 cool racing car, Fred Vesti. It, maybe it's not anything to do with strategy. Maybe it's a problem. Right behind him is Lorenzo Fluxer in sixth. And Flux is going to go for the overtake down the inside of Bijoy Garg, who can't get back across the road to defend from the Spaniard. And a change of position there for fifth place. So that was a bit of a touch on the left of Derek De Boer's car from a recovering 35 Ultimate. Remember that had a spin out of Colin Tayo corner not that long ago. And Ultimate uh, for Louis Stern, who is a name we know from the Ligia European series racing for ultimate this weekend but now at the back of that category yeah there was the 
kiss side to side between the two. Tricky here with the LMP3 cars and the LMGT3 cars. Now around the outside goes Sebastian Alvarez on Bijoy Garg. This is a fight for sixth and seventh places. And if Alvarez can stay there, he'll be in on the inside line for Lujo and gets that move done. So he's opted to jump at the earliest possible opportunity. Just about. So this will be, I'm sure, a driver change the 83. Pits from fifth place with a couple of very quick drivers available. Oh, there's a spin there for all the number 14 car on its outlap. Didn't see whether or not there was a touch, but it was on cold tyres. Now to the outside line, number 65, Artur Leclerc, down the inside of Ritoma Miata and gets ahead. That was cracking stuff and uh, looking racy, and Artur Leclerc is enjoying his time in LMP2. So look out for the green Ferrari, a big hit onto the EDEC car coming out of the Biondetti chicane and that automatic, oh, and then a second one as well, which has completely dislodged, broken that front right wheel. I, I wouldn't imagine that the EDEC sport car's got three wheels after that. It was a huge hit initially. Now his French teammate, Matteo Capietto, is going to go for the race lead, is he? No, not quite. Oli Caldwell had that move covered, but Capietto now trying to get the outside line out of San Donato. That's not going to work, though, for Luco, so has to stay in second. Oh, what a great move this could be if he charges his way down the inside of Poggio Secco. Makuchi, and there's a touch between Hiroshi Amaguchi and Alessia Rivera. Amaguchi looked like he was very slow there. Has he discovered something? Oh, there's a big one. There's a huge crash, I'm afraid, to the back of Claudia Schiavone's car. And that was Rahel Fry who tagged the back of the 60 machine as they were going down the long straight. And amazingly, everybody else got through the carnage. But that's a huge hit for Claudia Schiavone, who got tagged to the rear. And it's another safety car. Big hit. He's walked away from the car, looking pretty shocked, to be honest with you. This is the inside from the Lamborghini it has to take the grass to, uh, to avoid. The best news is Claudia Scuvoni has walked away from that. And red flag would be the result whilst the track was cleared up. All of those 17 LMP2 cars are on the lead lap. We then get to the first car that is not, and that is the AF Corsa 83. After that uh, clash between the 83 and the 63 Lamborghini, Lesia Rivera sits seventh in LMP2 Pro-Am. No overtaking before the line, remember, although you can pull out of line as long as you're not overlapping at that point, and that's a killer getaway for Oli Gray, who might be alongside. In fact, he's almost in front of Massimo Capietto, but Capietto says, no, you don't, and charges down the inside. <laughs> Oh, and that little bit of contact from Robert Kubica won't have helped either, but he did get through in car number 14. A bit of drag there, isn't it? It is, as you can see, it is affecting the handling of that car. Is it just the bodywork damage that's affecting the handling of the car? Has that car taken a dink on that corner? That car is dropping back. It's Rotoma Miata aboard that car. Oh, big off though. Four. It's a 17. Porsche was ahead of the Aston, then Stevenson down the inside of Rahel Fry. That seemed like a fair move. Then Casper Stevenson slows for the virtual safety car, and Rahel Fry did not in the 85 car. Trouble for Adam Ali. He's dropped out of this lead battle. So he was involved in that tussle, trying to get through the Gellum GT3 pack, and he has dropped way back down now. Lost, what was that? Uh, 14, 15 seconds somewhere. So the Euro International car, a championship leader that was running a strong third and looking to get on the terms with the RLR cars ahead, has now dropped to sixth position with Adam Alley. Oh, there was a touch there. Touch there between the GR racing car and the JMW car, I think. Manu Collard is struggling a touch with this car, which might be tyre wear, potentially. He can't defend from Lawson, who's going to be down the inside to take the lead in LMGT3 at Scarparia corner. 
closing, closing, closing the toe though, Johnny. So to the left, surely Giotto's going to go now and Delatraz will break as late as he can, but the Giotto car can break even later. Far more manoeuvrability from the number 34 car. Lacey gets through on the 31, but here comes the 34 into Europol wow. competition car around the outside. He's got tyres underneath that car, hasn't he? Scarparia into Palagio, that's two position. Here's Daniel Serra to the high side in the car guy Ferrari, trying to break as late as he possibly can. If he can stay there, door handle to door handle, the next corner's a left-hander and without any contact whatsoever, an absolutely superb overtake. Well, how many people predicted that the number nine, Iron Lynx Proton car, They're was going to, to again. win this race? They are going to win this race. So let's deal with the win, first of all, for Iron Lynx and Proton. A terrific catch and overtake for Daniel Serra in the number 57 Kessel Racing in LMP2 Pro-Am. It's Matthias Besch in the number 29 Richard Mill by TDS Racing Crew with Gregoire Sose and Rodrigo Sales. Almost an hour and 20 minutes. Normally you can only do 60 minutes in one of these cars. An incredible result for Team Virage in their number eight. For Julien Gerby, Bernardo Pinheiro and Julien Omrion. Well, there is the result. It's the number nine Iron Lynx Proton Orica. 114 laps under the wheels. Six and a half seconds clear of the 25 Algo Pro Racing uh, Orica and into Europol's 34 in LMP2 Pro Am. Richard Meal by TDS take the win and eighth overall with their 29 car. Head with the 20 from Algo Pro Racing and the 77 from Proton Competition. Spectacular finish in LMP3. Team Virage's number eight car. Just edge it from the number 15 car of RLRM Sport with Inter Europol uh, on the podium in that class two in the number 88. And then a win in spectacular fashion for the 57 Kessel Racing Ferrari at a grid motorsport by TF's number 97 Aston Martin. And completing the podium is the 50 Formula Racing Ferrari. See you in three weeks in Portugal.